Good night, everyone, and welcome to the Young Asian Voice 2.0 for the United Nations we need. Our program will be started in a short while, but waiting for the for the other participant to join in. Please rename yourself based on the breakout room name and country. And also, please remain uh, muted during the main section and do turn on your camera so that we can interact with you. Good afternoon and good evening, ladies and gentlemen from all over the world. Welcome to Young Asia Voice 2.0. I'm Carrie, your MC of today's program. So first of all, let us welcome Mr. Phyllis Josh, the coordinator of the Young Asian Voice 2.0 for the United Nations we need to share us the welcome speech and housekeeping rules of the program. Mr. Phyllis, the floor is yours. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Thank you for joining in to the Young Asian Voices 2.0 for the United Nations we need. Now, I would like to extend my warmest and greatest uh, regard to all those who have joined in today. And we will be sending these key takeaways for the to the Coalition for the United Nations we need for the Global Futures Forum held in New York or in the month of March. So therefore we are collecting regional youth responses and perspectives for on the tracks of the SDGs with regard to the our common agenda. And as you have already noticed, we've sent you the emails and do join us on board having the Zoom background and also go through the background materials that have been sent to you. We're excited to have you all on board for this prestigious event and hope to have you all continually and make this event a success. And thank you once again. And I pass this time to back to the MCs for the next session. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Phyllis, for the sharing. Now, without further ado, let us listen to the opening remark by Prof. Dado Dennison, the Chair of the Society for the Promotion of the SDG. Welcome to everyone to the Young Asian Voices Gathering. Uh, I need to understand that there are over 60 young people registered from 26 countries. So a special word of welcome to each one of you to this program that is hosted uh, by the Malaysian My SDG Academy, which is a training arm of the Society for the Promotion of SDGs in collaboration with the coalition for the UN we need. Now, as I was um, talking and mentioning, uh, the key aspect is the sustainable development goals. We recognize that there is a need to accelerate the implementation of the SDGs, the 17 goals, and most countries in Asia uh, have been committed to this but there is a setback due to COVID, due to the economic unrest and so forth. And so we need to accelerate it over the next few years uh, to reach the targets of the 2030. Uh, and this is important because uh, Asia has a large number of people uh, who are in the category of the poor, who are part of the informal sector, who are migrant workers, who are among the bottom 40%. While Asia is also an economic powerhouse with great growth in China, India, Indonesia, in many parts where there has been high economic growth, but there is a cost to various aspects uh, and these are concerns that we hope that in this day of conversation 
on the UN we need, we will be able to discuss them openly, critically, um, and with the view of the change that is needed for the future. Now, I am also made to understand that there will be four main sessions um, um, following through the SDGs on people, climate, prosperity, and peace, uh, which then brings the team of the 16 SDGs, plus in each of these SDGs or the thematic areas, partnership is critical. So in the area of people and people development, in the area of the planet and the care for the planet, uh, in the area of prosperity and economic growth, we cannot see them in isolation or in separate ways, uh, but they are cross-cutting, they are overlapping, uh, and they impact each other uh, in a much more holistic and inclusive way. And therefore, partnerships between government, civil society, between academia, between private sector is critical. And in this context, it's not just the older ones of us who should take the responsibility, but definitely it is the young people. And we are encouraged that you are interested, you have joined, you are part of this process uh, in a significant way. So I think young people are uh, dynamic, young people have the energy, young people have the interest, uh, and, and so it's also your turn because as we come to the midpoint of the SDGs now, between 2015 and 2022, um, and this year with, uh, in 2023, the SDG Summit in September. And then we have from 2024, the final leg to 2030. And so I hope and pray that in the conversation that you will have together today, you will identify the critical issues and concerns, the achievements from your experience, and the way forward especially the way young people will take on the mental and play a critical role and concern uh, in the implementation and delivery uh, of SDGs. From us in Malaysia, we are happy to partner through the My SDG Academy uh, and our people here have been very active in the process and also to partner with the UN Coalition for the UN we need, um, and this is a global partnership, and we hope that the findings uh, will feed into the discussions at the global level. We are in one global village, no longer in isolation of one another, as one big family, not necessarily happy, uh, but we all face challenges, achievements, and so we need to find pathways for change and hope. And we really look forward to your findings. Please share it with us. And we hope together with you, we can move the next mile. Thank you and all the best to all of you. Thank you, Prof. Dr. Tato Denison. It is indeed a remarkable speech. As Prof. Tato Denison said, there is a need to accelerate the SDG to achieve the goal in 2030 as a one big family for Asian country. Now, let us invite Ms. Taylor Hawking, Coalition for the UN We Need representative from Australia, to introduce the team, context, and pathway of the forum. Welcome. Thank you so much, and that's certainly a, a big speech to follow. Uh, my name is Taylor Hawkins. I have been working in youth advocacy for almost a decade and now work as an advisor for the Our Future Agenda Program, an initiative of the United Nations, and have had the pleasure of working with the coalition for the UN we need as it prepares for the Global Futures Forum. Uh, I am on the precipice of no longer being a youth. I've got about a year and a half left, and I plan on making the most of it. 
Uh, but I do just really want to encourage you to make the most of this opportunity, as well as the fact that I'm sure you're all very aware we don't often get calls and events on this topic in our time zone. So the fact that it is daylight outside for, for most of us, I believe, and we're getting to participate in this really rich conversation that is so important at this point uh, is incredibly exciting. Uh, so <clears throat> before I dive in any more, I would also like to acknowledge that I am dialing in from Darug country in Australia. I would like to acknowledge elders past, present and emerging, and that sovereignty was never ceded, and that acknowledgement unfortunately will also not be enough to heal our country. So I hope myself and other Australian leaders continue to take action for reconciliation. I will now move on to giving a little bit of context, cover some of the themes, the questions we're going to cover, uh, and then I will be sending us off to a group photo and some breakout rooms where I'll hand back to the MCs. But as most of you will be aware, as I believe you've all filled out your survey, this session builds on the first round of CFU and regional consultations undertaken in June 2021 that discussed priority issues on the role of civil society in the United Nations in each of five regions globally, nationally and regional CFUN partners and global civil society are once again invited to organize and participate in another round of these consultations, which is what this event is. These regional futures forums are intended to bring critical and diverse international civil society perspectives into preparations for an annual civil society led global futures forum, which is really an opportunity for voices like ours, and I still put myself in this group, to be able to contribute to these global conversations that will have a meaningful long term impact. So it is very exciting. I might be being an advocacy nerd at the moment, but I will say these opportunities are incredible. And the fact that the multilateral system is moving to listen more and more to young people is, uh, you know, due. It's, it's a good thing that they're doing it, but also it's a real privilege. Uh, so I hope you all really enjoy this experience. A key outcome of the Global Futures Forum will be the development of a People's Pact for the Future, uh, which is a civil society declaration on both principles and advocacy designed to feed into the General Assembly's preparation uh, for the UN Pact for the Future and related Summit of the Future uh, outcome instruments. This can include the proposed declaration on future generations, a global digital compact, a new agenda for peace, as well as reform on the global financial architecture to reduce inequality and fulfill the 2030 agenda and Paris Agreement commitments. Despite the importance and progress of the proposals included in our common agenda, which I'm a big fan of, there is a need to raise greater awareness of the thematic tracks under discussion in the General Assembly and their potential impacts on the UN's ability to resolve the challenges of our time. Given this context, it's critical that we start to ask these questions that I know you've all started thinking about, like what mechanisms or actions based on our common agenda our priorities for each region because this will be different. Each region has its own characteristics, its own priorities and specifications, as well as cultural perspectives. And so really getting to highlight these differences is hugely valuable so we don't end up with this sort of flattened view of the world. What elements are of priority interest among countries of the region in preparation for the intersecting SDG summit as well as the summit of the future because They've been referred to as twin summits. They're deeply related, uh, although separate events. And so how can we look at these intersections in a way that really represents our region? How should the multiple actors of each region become protagonists of the OCA process and look at the opportunities they present? So these are just some of the questions that we can start to think about. And I encourage you to be sort of creative and audacious in this because the greatest ideas that we're seeing come out at the moment are not necessarily just looking to tweak old world ideas, they're really bringing new ideas of what our institutions could look like. And some of the words I'm hearing the most in our team is reimagine the whole system. And so how can we reimagine from scratch? And I do, I challenge you, this is gonna be a safe space for ideas, is to take that creativity and see where you can take your thoughts. Um, but by undertaking this process, this, we hope to promote the development of common positions between countries, so finding those areas of common ground, so that we can bring that into the high-level political forum, the SDG summit, and the preparatory meeting for the summit of the future. We also want to identify synergies and thematic linkages between OCA and the 2030 agenda. As I said, there's many interlinkages. There's also key moments throughout the year, whether that is the Commission on the Status of Women meetings, the ECOSOC Youth Forum. There's plenty of times where we can pull these levers or see where we can find progress. We also want to identify opportunities opened by our common agenda for intergovernmental tracks leading to the summit of the future to deliver on these ambitious set of outcomes. We want to increase visibility and knowledge of the our common agenda 
process and reform proposals. And this is a really great activity in that the pre-reading, the discussions, this is exactly how you get confident and well-versed in the contents of these elements. And then we want to contribute to further identifying thematic elements of our common agenda that are of priority importance for member states so that we can then feed this in to the People's Pact for the future. So to support this, today we will be diving deep into the contributions that you have made through your survey submissions across the SDG themes, as was already mentioned just before me. So we've got people, prosperity, planet, and peace. And in each of the discussions, as I said, we will identify synergies. So what OCA proposals would you want to see reflected or modified in the summit of the future, including its proposed pact for the future outcome document? And what would complement the SDG summit and accelerated implementation of the 2030 agenda? We should also consider what's missing. What particular global governance proposals are not mentioned in their OCA report? whether it's institutional, legal, normative, or operational, we should consider where there are areas of opportunity to add new ideas. And we should also discuss next steps. What participation modalities and intergovernmental outcomes would you recommend for both the SDG Summit and the Summit of the Future so that we can continue to reinforce these synergies and linkages between OCA and the 2030 Agenda? I know that was a lot of information to go through, but I tell you that you will have a lot of support through this process. You will also have a group of other young people who are navigating this discussion as well. So do keep it conversational and keep yourself open to these ideas coming through. But it is now my pleasure to hand over to Clarin and uh, Vania, I believe, who will be coordinating a group photo before we move into the breakout rooms. But as I said, my closing comment for you is I encourage you to make the most of this opportunity and have your voices heard in this process as it's really essential. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. I believe everyone has been highly motivated and can't wait to share your ideas for the discussion. Now, before that, ladies and gentlemen, please turn on your camera for the group photo session to record this memorable moment. As we have a few pages of participants, please keep smiling while we're taking the picture. And also, for those who haven't um, downloaded the background for our program, please do so, and the link is provided in the chat box. I believe the special task force is already get ready. So one, two, three, smile. Next page, one, two, three, smile. Another page, one, two, three, smile. All right, thank you everyone. And thank you for your cooperation. So now we have come to our most exciting session, the discussion on the OCA proposal and recommendation from the perspective of implementing the Sustainable Development Goal. So dear participant, please wait for our special task force to allocate you into respective breakout room. So while waiting, you may also go through the provided materials for the forum and refresh your idea. Good luck and enjoy the discussion. So welcome back everyone again. It is truly an amazing discussion as I was able to join the pregnant um, breakout room just now. Everyone is actively discussing and I believe in every breakout room is also like everyone will have been discuss it, the, pro the proposal, very actively and now so let's listen to the effort from every breakout room so first let's welcome the representative of breakout room one people to present their key takeaway uh, this is me official leader and i will be sharing some of the key takeaways of my breakout session which is people so uh, we had a very interesting conversation with everybody my friends from pakistan vietnam malaysia we all uh, uh, came together in really uh, for a very, very great and interesting conversations and proposed some of the solutions to uh, our uh, our agendas. So basically, what we talked about is we talked about what United Nations has proposed and what countries are actually doing in terms of human rights. 
Okay, so the United Nations proposes some things, but countries do not really agree on a lot of the matters, right? So what uh, you know, countries can do to implement the proposals in its own agendas was one of our uh, main takeaway. Like, well, likewise, some of the problems that the government is facing and the youths in the government and in the country are facing the in the issue of the agendas, implementation of the declaration was another issue that we discussed in. Likewise, what we, uh, what, uh, what our conversation uh, took on, what we realized was that most of the youths they are shifting uh, more towards the private organizations, uh, private sectors, and organizations more than the government. So, what can uh, what can governments do to build trust, uh, which was uh, included, uh, which was one of the takeaway on rebuilding the social contract between uh, the government and the people was another another issue that we discussed in. Likewise, some of the solutions that we came up was inclusion of youths women lgbtqia plus communities in not just participation but in lawmaking process as well uh, the united nations can uh, can uh, can come up with memorandum of understanding between youth organizations so that the laws that uh, united nations uh, uh, um, countries in the united nations ratify is not only uh, is not only made by them, but there is a representation of youths and minorities, and there is an inclusivity uh, not in uh, not in the offline mode, but in uh, but in digital in in a digital way as well, uh, as well as implementing uh, sustainable development goals in the course from young age, so that people uh, young people can be aware about uh, about it was uh, one of, another solution that we proposed. So uh, these are the main uh, takeaways of our uh, that uh, of our breakout session. It was very fruitful, um, but we didn't have enough time to discuss more of what we, what we had in uh, in our minds. But the discussion was really fruitful, and uh, the problems and the challenges and the solutions that we discussed uh, uh, is uh, this that I mentioned right now. Thank you. Thank you so much to the representative of the breakout room one of people. And thank you for sharing your insights. They were really thoughtful. So now we're gonna pass along to the breakout room two, prosperity. So you may present now. Hello everyone. Uh, I am Emerson. I was part of the prosperity group. I think the first thing that we noticed when we were thinking about um, Prosperity as it comes to you is just the rapidly evolving digital landscape. I think a really good example is it's all the craze right now is just chat GPT and how that's going to change the job market. Um, and so there are two parts of that when you're looking at digital trans landscape. There is first off uh, the user experience and what I say by user experience. So um, you've, you've are becoming rapidly the way, the way that we think, the way that we consume news, the way that we interact with things are very heavily influenced by the digital landscape, right? For example, we consume a lot more short form content and so our memory is really declining. For example, we consume a lot of uh, very segregated news and the internet can be an echo chamber. So we don't get the perspectives of other people that we might want to get, uh, that you might have been able to get when you were off the internet, you're always seeing and hearing from people that look like you and sound like you. So on one hand, when you're looking at digital landscape uh, and, and the user experience side of things, we think it's important to um, really make sure that you are taken to account as a user so that as you are continuing to develop, um, they are not heavily affected by things like addiction, by the kind of uh, political, um, skewing that you find in news, that youth also be a part of the resource and the capacity building of this uh, to other youth, and also on the internet intergenerational scale, because we have that perspective of how to cater to our own population, but also with uh, older generations, with elderly, they might not know how to use uh, this technology. I think that also does help kind of bridge the gap between generations, because ageism kind of can be a problem as well. And on the other other part of 
the digital landscape is also the skills needed for you. Um, in the same way, I think uh, you can be a resource in creating and helping teach other people, how other youth and other people how to uh, navigate the digital space and then make full use of these tools to uh, be adaptive to the current job market. But also that you do need, I think it's important to acknowledge that do, you do need the tools, the digital tools to really be able to continue increasing the skill in it in schools. Um, but also that I, I think it also is a useful economic indicator to include um, youth and how skilled they are in this digital landscape. Um, as the UN continues to look for an indicator, an economic indicator that doesn't just include GDP, but other things like the health of the planet, human well-being, um, and whatnot, because I do think this will also increase investor confidence in a country. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Emerson, for your great sharing. So now I will invite representative of Breakout Room 3 Planet. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. And okay, thank you very much. And I'm in a, and here I'm Hendy Surya and I'm from Indonesia. And I would like to present uh, I would like to present the uh, presentations from the Planet Working Group. And first of all, that we have a lively discussion and also uh, and also the insightful uh, remarks regarding the planet from, from the delegates from the planet working group as well. And the first of one, uh, I have I, I want to say that what OCA proposals would you want to see reflect or modified? The first of all, we are we are from the planet working group. We are uh, proposing on the focusing on the SDG goals that more than as a business benefits matters that it's. Uh, and and it's the SDG goal should be impacts every everyone and it impacts every aspect. That's uh, only uh, that's not only about the profit, but also about the planet and also the people and also prosperity and also the partnership with everyone as well. And the second one is um, we have uh, we propose for the more sustainable systems in any any climate actions and also mitigations and also. The collaborations with other, uh, with any stakeholders, including the youth, and also adolescent, and also the marginalized groups, and there, uh, and the third one is, uh, we are proposing for the government responsibility in handling a financial climate crisis as well, which are faced uh, by several countries in the world as well, and the four, uh, and the fourth uh, proposal that we propose is. To, we we propose to monitor whether that the proposals are used properly in the country and it and what particular the go, uh, global governance proposals not mentioned in the OCA report should be included for the uh, consideration and the first one we propose to we need to more government as, uh, enforcement in any uh, in any climate actions and also the climate mitigations and also the building of more uh, resilient uh, resilient development and also the uh, the more climate resilient in, uh, in in any sustainable development and the second one we need to our young people voices to be included in decision making and also the taking actions to help together to making the collective actions for uh, for the better earth and also more sustainable development and the, uh, and the third one is we are proposing to uh, improving to and emphasizing the safety of youth activists by the choose the right leader, which are fresh uh, thoughts away of the current issues, so that there uh, can be a civil relationship between the nations. So, uh, any uh, any youth activist should be uh, should uh, should be more safe and also not uh, not targeted as they are uh, as they are voicing the right uh, right voices for our our planet as well, and. That the, the and then and, and last one is uh, what participation modalities and intergovernmental outcomes would you recommend it? And the first one, uh, we recommend to adding SDGs, the sustainable development goals, into the education materials. And not only SDG number one, not only SDG number two, but also uh, SDG number 13, 14, 15, which, uh, which are the planet's uh, pillars, and also the 16, 17, the peace, and also the partnership. and Every, every part of SDGs that should be integrated to it. And the second one, 
uh, we also uh, we also empathize to how to create a me mechanism system that allows the public voices, uh, aka voices that can make into bill and also can make uh, into the uh, into the powerful into the powerful uh, statement into the uh, global forum as well. And the third uh, third one we propose for the stronger financial mechanism for the climate and environmental actions, which is the financial me uh, mechanism should be inclusive and accessible to everyone. And the last one is we are uh, we are proposing for the selection of the young youth leaders from the schools and also to give and receive feedbacks and solutions of the uh, of each problem because uh, because the youth, uh, youth leaders are know uh, are knowing more and also are knowing what are the, what are the true and also what are the uh, what are actually happening in, in the planet and and etc so i think that's uh, that's are the the voices and also the recommendations that uh, delivered from the planet working group and thank you very much and i would like to give the floor to the uh, organizer and to our organizer the floor is yours thank you so much representative of the breakout room three of planet uh, so thank you for sharing. That was wonderful. And now I would like to invite the representative of breakout number four about peace for the presentation. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Hafiza. I am originally from Penang Island, Malaysia, currently reside in the uh, Klang Valley area in Malaysia. So uh, what we have discussed in the peace breakout room is incredibly unique and different and very diverse opinion so uh, the first one is to um, really emphasize on indigenous people and intergenerational efforts and also to really amplify different cultures all together and to acknowledge that when different culture come together and when we achieve a middle ground we could achieve peace and we also emphasize that we cannot um, facilitate a conversation that is happening online without giving access to the internet for the people in rural areas and people who are economically disadvantaged. And we also came to realize that it is incredibly crucial to put emphasis on providing internet and also knowledge of the internet and how the internet could help and how the internet could be a disadvantage. You know, just by teaching people the importance of internet um, to the people who do not have any idea of what it is and people who are struggling and who are far behind than all of us here. So we are all about educate, educating people and including them in the conversation because we believe that we cannot include people in a conversation that they do not understand. And a lot of people don't understand or even gain knowledge because they are very much um, disadvantaged from having access to the internet. We did provide so much emphasis on, you know, educating people on the internet and giving them access to the internet because both of this works hand in hand. And also it is incredibly, incredibly crucial to amplify um, the grassroots movements in all of the nations globally. Um, it doesn't, you know, these movement does not have to be a popular movement or movement that has a lot of followers because there are a lot of grassroots movements that are not popular, that are not known, that are not heard of, but are working on, you know, the common ground that we are all working on. You know, they are all working for the better future and they are all working within the social justice rhyme. So it is very important for us to determine these grassroots movement and em empower them and amplify their movement. And also again, we are again um, really emphasizing on intergenerational partnership. I do not know if I have already mentioned this, but we did discuss a lot on this and how um, we cannot empower and amplify the youth without getting help from the older generation. And this is an ongoing process. And this is still happening even with this organization itself, where the youth movement like us are trying to amplify our voices by getting to the UN, where most of people who work in the UN 
are in the older generation and we are trying to emphasize that it is very important we work together as one um doesn't matter if we are youth or we are in the older generation it is very very important that we work together to find peace because peace cannot be found peace cannot be facilitated without help from the younger generation and the older generation working together so this is something uh we have discussed um in the peace break room thank you so much for listening bye Thank you, Bikaru Pro, and thank you to all the participants. There are so many um, great ideas there, and you all have really done a good job. So let's give everyone, including yourself, who make this happen, a big round of approach. And now we have come to the end of our program. And let's welcome Ms. Joel Ng, Executive of Communication and Capacity Building of My SDG Academy and 2021 Organizing Chair of the Young Asian Voices for the United Nations, we need to give the closing remark. Thank you, thank you, Clarine. If you can hear some background uh, voice from my, it's a dance, yeah, lion dancing. So we are still celebrating Chinese New Year. I know that today, some of you have wake up at 5 a.m. and then to join this uh, conversation. I appreciate the time that you have invested here. And I also want to congratulations to Philip a very young but dynamic leader. Philip, can you say hi again to everyone? Hello, <laughs> okay. hi. A gentleman. Uh, she has been doing an awesome work for the past one month to gather the youth here. I just want to share a journey with you, a very true journey. Uh, I started to involve in the United Nations work or the global youth work last year, Jan uh, June, from this event particularly. So I, I am very active in my country, in Malaysia, uh, in youth development. But uh, until last year, someone actually approached me to organize the Youth ASEAN Voices One. And we have about 80 participants from 19 countries join. So from there, I get to know Phyllis and I start to involve in the uh, global network. And within a short period of time from, uh, sorry, it's not last year, it's 2021 June. 2021 June, we started uh, from there within 20, year, uh, 20 months, we have organized Youth SDG Submit in Malaysia in 2021 November, Youth SDG Submit, second Youth SDG Submit uh, in Malaysia in 2022 June, and in 2022 July, I given the opportunity to visit United Nations um, in New York and to participate in high level political forum and to get to know the, 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 the bigger uh, network. So what I'm trying to say that is you never know when you, when you participate in a forum like this, the impact that you are going to, to create for yourself and also for the policy. All right. So um, I hope that you all get to know uh, this platform this is not only a program, but this now is um, many of the awesome people here Try to get in touch with them. They are representative from different countries. They've been very active in the, in the uh, community, building a resilience and also sustainable community. So get in touch and you may have a lot more opportunity in future, especially for those who are still below 35 years old. Frankly speaking, this year I just graduated as a youth. So I, I'm really like looking for someone like Phyllis to take up the work. So uh, another thing I learned throughout the 20 months in the global network is quantity versus impact. I get to see that many youth have holding a lot of positions here and there, sharing here and there. But uh, when I really go to the, the tip, I found that people are looking for impact. You can tell people I'm the president of ABC. I am the chair lady, chairman of XYZ but there are thousands and millions of presidents and challenges in the organization. But there are limited solution providers. Sorry. We are going to be in the firework. Enjoy the Chinese New Year for a while. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Zoil. And as she said, thank you so much for everything that you have been sharing and how you would like to see more youth engagement as well and everything that you have uh, 
like basically said before. And I hope that everyone has gained great insight and something that you can learn from now on. So you just can keep it with yourself along all your way. Um, and something before all we all leave, I would like to invite all the participants to write down on the chat whatever you want to deliver to the United Nations. We will record the messages and pass your voices to the United Nations as well. All right, I'm back. <laughs> this now was the okay. Uh, so so is it finished already? The last slide. Yes. Uh, apologies because we couldn't hear the firecrackers. I think it was loud as well, so she couldn't hear us uh, speaking. Okay, so so so, so uh, Nama, I just wrap up and then I pass the floor back. So I'm um, just want to say thank you and uh my encouragement to all the youth here. You are the leaders and. Besides of joining actively in various platforms, I would like to encourage you to go further, to create impact, to create a best practice, to create something for the world, a model or a program. So focus on creating impact. And you have a lot to go because the world today, the government today is really looking for the youth voices. All right, okay, uh, back to you, MC. Thank you, Ms. Chael. So uh, now, um, before we end our program, all the participants are invited to type down your message that you wish to deliver to the United Nations. And we will record these messages and pass your voice to the United Nations. And if you wish to join the Global Future Forum, you may also register yourself by the link in the chat box. Uh, if um, and find your interested consultation. I believe the special task force will share the link later. All right, everyone. So thank you so much. The time has ended and it's time to say goodbye. Um, thank you again, everyone. And thank you to Mr. Philus, Professor Datuk, uh, Ms. Taylor, Ms. Zuil, and all the committee and all the participants who made this possible. Because of you, this program was carried successfully. Thank you again so much. And Probably see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. See you again. Bye.